feels good to receive a warm welcome. I'm a little nervous because I didn't know if I was going to make it out here this afternoon. I was at the mall. They had a power outage, and I was stuck on the escalator for hours. <laughs> so I teach criminal justice. Most of my background, most of my adult life, as you can tell, I'm an old guy. I used to play with dinosaurs as a child. And so my observations through my careers, which have included law enforcement, and military, and homeland security, these common elements in, in my careers have involved problem solving, critical thinking, influencing people to make right choices, uh, influencing my environment for a better outcome. Um, I, uh, it, it will come as no surprise then if you know that my hobby also shares many of those same characteristics. I rebuild old cars on the weekends. I invite some of my students out, uh, some, some younger men and women, and they come out and they help me build, rebuild old cars, restore these, these junkers to some state of usability, some functionality. And uh, we, we enjoy that a great deal. But as you may be aware, there's, uh, there's problems associated with restoring old cars. Now, this vehicle that you see in the picture is an old truck. Looks good, though. It's not my truck. I've never seen this truck. But I have a truck in my, in my shop that someday is going to look like this truck. Now, the, the problem is between my present reality and my future expectations. The problem is that wilderness between where I am and where I want to be. And this truck is, is, my, is my mark. It's the prize. It's what I press towards. And that wilderness is where the monsters live. And I never want to pitch my tent. I never want to camp out in the wilderness. I want to keep moving and pressing on towards, towards that mark. That's my motivation. So there are three things that I've identified as I have, as I have traveled through the wilderness about problem solving. Three principles, three phases that, that, are in common, that, that seem to be in common no matter what, your, what the application is. Uh, first of all, you have to identify the problem. Sometimes the problem is not a problem as much as it is a series of smaller problems. And each smaller problem has its own, its own challenges and its own uh, uh, processes uh, to be solved. The second P, because they teach you in public speaking that the audience likes to have three things that all, you know, three Ps. So process, problem identification, the principles that we apply to solve that problem. And then the third P is the process. If you're going to have a plan, and I've heard for years that you don't plan to fail, you fail to plan. And so in order to solve most any kind of a problem, you have to understand the problem, you have to understand the underlying principles, and you have to bring to bear some process that applies those principles to that problem. Now, this next slide, do you see the problem? My friend, my friend Kevin, gave me this truck. He said, John, you can have this old truck if you'll just come and get it out of my woods. Now, he knows that I like old vehicles, but this is like letting an alcoholic have a sniff of whiskey. This is like, I look at this truck and I think, no sane person would want to undertake this. I don't know if you can see what the left and the right picture. That there's tree, not just, there's like three trees that have all grown together. And there's this humongous, is that even a word, humongous? I'm a college professor. I can make up words if I want to. That's a humongous tree root, and it not only grows up in the space where there is no bed between the frame, but it actually has encapsulated, it begins to encapsulate the frame. There's a coil spring, and, and if you took cookie dough and put it in your hand and squeezed it, and, and the, the cookie dough would squeeze out from your fingers, that's what this tree has done inside this coil spring. This is a problem of, of significant magnitude. So you'll notice also there's a little tree in front of the, the rear wheel. There's another big old tree in front of the truck. This, tree, this truck is not going to move without some serious uh, wood crafting. Uh, 
the, the, the tires are all flat. You can't raise, you can't air up the tires because you can't raise up the truck because the truck is affixed to the earth. Mother Nature has claimed this truck. So I, I've got a couple of young guys that work with me, uh, Zeke Colby and, and Hunter Tipton. They, they, uh, they said, we, we all went out there, they came out to help me remove this truck and we were talking about the, the, the arduous task the daunting task that lies before us. And there's a, a ministry that I work at Bryan College, and there's a ministry uh, called Blazing Hope Ranch. And, and the, the young uh, husband and wife that run this ministry, this is for uh, restoring the lives of young women that have been victims of sexual assault, human trafficking. And those, those lives have been claimed very much like this truck. They've been, they've been abandoned. They've been disregarded. They've been damaged. And there's a need for restoration, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But these guys, Zeke and Hunter, said, well, we can, we can, we'll donate our time to, to fix up this truck, and then we'll just donate it to the ranch because every ranch needs a truck. And I thought, man, as much, as, as much of a challenge as this, it, as this is, that's, that object lesson, that picture is too great for us to pass up. So uh, perhaps in a moment of weakness, I said to myself, self, we will do this. Now, the first problem, sometimes you have to get out of the woods. Sometimes where you are at, where you are in, in life, in your, in your situation, you have to be removed from that in order to address your, your problem, in order to fix your problem. We, in order to get this truck out of the woods, literally, we have to cut it loose from the earth. Think me metaphorically of how the world the things of the world sometimes envelop us, and we lose sight of, of, of what it is to live. We, we can't understand the purpose of life because we're fixated on the little, the little things that attach us and connect us to, to the world. So literally, I mean me metaphorically, the, the earth, the world, we have to cut this truck loose. Then we have to get it to the trailer so that we can move it to the shop and put it in a safe place, a place where there are resources to bring to bear to fix that, to fix that truck. Now, the second, truck, the second picture shows the truck on a trailer. This is at the end of a nine-hour day. And two chainsaws and multiple blades and come-alongs and, and winches and jacks. And the rear wheels wouldn't turn. I don't know if you can see in the, in the, in the right-hand picture, but the tree trunk is still there. We, we got the trunk cut loose, you know, from the bottom. We got the trees cut loose from the top, but there's this ginormous, there's another one of those words, this ginormous tree trunk that's still attached. It's wrapped around the drive shaft, and so the wheels don't turn. So the way that we have to drag it onto the truck is jack up the rear axle, two, two bottle jacks, and then using a come-along jack on the front, we winch it forward until it falls off the jack. So it's... And then we, and it took us like an hour and a half to get it onto the trailer that way. Problem solving in small increments. Sometimes using the resources that you have, you just do what you can with what you have as long as you are making forward motion, as long as you are making progress. Don't camp out in the wilderness. That's where the monsters live. So we moved it to a safe place. We removed the trees. We were able to uh, air up tires or put new, put in, in, we had to actually put new, uh, uh, different wheels and tires on. And we finally got it to the safe place. Now, when, when we got it in the shop, you see the left picture, there's, uh, we're joined, Zeke and, and uh, Hunter are joined by Taylor Ray and uh, Jack Wise and, and Nick Goss. And uh, these guys all are putting their heads together. The wheels still don't turn after we've got the tree out, out of the picture. The wheels still don't turn. So there's multiple places where we could look. Is it the transmission? Is it the clutch? Is it the drive shaft? Is it the wheels themselves? And so I will tell you this, YouTube can make experts out of anybody. There's a lot. Of, so these guys are actually, and I'm not, used, I'm not a high-tech kind of guy, so they're out there in the shop, but they're all on their little devices, you know, and they're looking up how to fix some truck like this, and they figured it out, so now the, the wheels turn, and and anyway, long story short, that was kind of a complex problem, and it took quite a bit of problem solving and ingenuity to fix it. Now, the right-hand picture, not so much thinking. This is just brawn. Sometimes all you need is just sheer force. So these same aforementioned guys, they just picked up the bed of, of another truck that we had, and, and they just brought it over, and they just set it into place. So sometimes your problem solving 
is, is kind of complex, lots of thinking, lots of, you know, outside resources, and sometimes you just bow your back and you just do it. Uh, the beauty, though, of working with these, with these young men, they see the value of, they're, old, they're young guys with old souls. We listen to old 50s rock and roll music and work on old cars. My shop is decorated in, you know, 1950s and 60s decor. So they're really, it's like total immersion into this hot rod culture. But all the time we're working on this, there are parallels between what we're doing to this truck and what's happening at the ranch with, you know, the, where the, this truck is going to ultimately find its home. These two pictures show the left picture is not of the truck, but it's a process that we are using. This is a problem. This, this problem is a, a severe impact, severe trauma to the back end of a Suburban, and it created a, a, a big dent, a huge dent. And it also, there's a pin uh, for the latch to, to, a lot, to shut the, tr the, the back doors. So the pin is out of alignment, the doors won't shut right, uh, and it looks ugly. And like a lot of our lives, there's trauma that sometimes bends us all out of shape. It, it foils our best attempts to maximize uh, our, our, our joy. And so somehow we need to find a way to get that depression drawn back into alignment so that we may be restored to full functional fellowship. And that's what we're after uh, culturally, that's what we're after as a family, that's what we're after uh, as, as individuals. We want to be in full functional relationship uh, with, with those around us. Now, the problem with this particular design is I can't go on the backside and just use force to drive that dent back out because of the structure of the door. So what I have to do is I have to, I have to attach something to the deepest part of the damage and then I have to use gentle pressure to pull it back into place. Some of you already see where I'm going with this. I took six penny nails, I ground off the point, and I spot welded them to the deepest part of the depression, of the damaged area. You'll see that I have a square piece of tubing that's resting on the high points, which is my standard. That's where I need to draw the rest of it back to. You have to have a standard. You have to have a reference point. You have to know when the problem is solved. Now, I also didn't have high dollar body shop equipment. I had a carpenter, I had, I had six penny nails, and I had a, a framing hammer, and I had a piece of square tubing. But you know what? Sometimes what you have is all you need. So we welded the nails, and through a process of pulling them out to the standard, to the, to the high point, we were able to, and I won't show you the after picture, but uh, except for a, a final coat of paint, that turned out to be a complete restoration. Not only was the dent fixed, but the alignment, the uh, latch pin lined back up, the door opens and closes. Full functionality, uh, problem solving, and I think, again, how, how we apply this to some of our own lives and some people we know, some trauma, some painful thing, some some traumatic dynamic force has injured us, it's deformed us in some way, and the way that we need to be restored is to find some connection point that attaches to the deepest part of our hurt and draws us back gently to where we need to be. And again, I'm thinking about the ranch where these, these women are being ministered to after having experienced the horrendous uh, uh, events in their lives that have deformed and derailed them. Horses are part of the ranch ministry. Horses are a way that people can connect emotionally when they are not, they're not yet ready to trust emotionally another human being. That just that touched me at a very deep level. And every time we work on our, on these vehicles, I am reminded of those of those kind of lessons. The right hand picture is a little different. This is a rust thing. Accidents happen sometimes caused by other people. Rust. This is a problem that's of our own doing. Rust is, is caused by our own negligence, our own neglect. And sometimes when things are severely rusted, I don't know if you can see it in the picture, that long kind of uh, piece of new metal that has been welded in, tack welded in, we had to cut out the old rusty cancerous part. Sometimes parts of our lives are so badly damaged that we, we have to eliminate the toxicity. We have to eliminate the cancer. Those of you with any medical background will immediately appreciate that analogy. And then we replace that with new solid foundation stock. And then we grind it and we paint it and we make it pretty and it's just as good as new. 
And there is a redemption process that happens in our lives. And this is a lesson that, that I'm imparting. This is a lesson I'm learning myself, even as I am teaching this same lesson to, to these young uh, guys and gals that are working with me. Um, the, the left-hand picture just shows we burned up a bunch of saw blades. I don't know what kind of wood that was that grew up in that truck. That was some hard stuff. And we went through like six chainsaw blades. And sometimes you have, your, your high-tech answer doesn't necessarily work. We're reduced to axes and chisels and drills and anything we can do to turn that mass into nothing but sawdust. Sometimes low-tech. We finally did it. We finally got it done. Um, the right-hand picture, this is a... a this is, uh, requires a little more high-tech, a little more uh, problem-solving uh, mathematics. Uh, yes, boys and girls, sometimes you will use math in real life. Uh, sometimes problem-solving is reduced to simple mathematics. So anyway, oh, here's a good picture. Sometimes, every guy that works for me on a general, as a general basis, they're big guys, fully growed, as we say in the South. And so sometimes you have to get into tight places. And so our best option here was to hire the skinny kid from across the street. And he's right up in there, right literally inside the truck, you know, tightening something that none of us could get to. So it's a fun thing, but uh, this, is, this was uh, an example of, of sometimes less is best. This is where I'm at today. Now, we've come a long ways from that, old, from, the, from the woods. We've come out of the woods a long ways. Now, the, the, the truck bed is not painted. The truck hood still needs some work. Uh, the top of the trucks, you know, well, I mean, there's just a lot. We're, we're, not, we're not there yet. But as we traverse through the wilderness where the monsters live and the problems need to be solved, uh, we're working through this, solving these problems one step at a time, one piece at a time, labor of love, and as we, as we get ready to donate this truck to the Blazing Hope Ranch, we hope that everything we've done here is a perfect picture of God's love for us, of the redemption of man, restoring each other to full, full faith, full functionality, full fellowship, uh, because, because that's what we do. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it.